We are heading to the championship rounds. Going into the championship round. This is it now, championship round. This is the Championship Rounds Podcast, episode 5, and today we're just doing a quick prediction episode. We're talking boxing, we're talking Anthony Joshua versus Carlos Takam. This fight's going to be for the IBF and WBA heavyweight title. There's also big names on the undercard. We've got Dylan White fighting for the WBC silver heavyweight, Katie Taylor for the WBA lightweight championship, Frank Buglioni for the British light heavyweight. There's a lot of up-and-coming British boxers with Lawrence Okoli, Josh Boazzi, and Joe Cadena. So let's talk main event. We got Anthony Joshua, originally scheduled to fight Kubat Pulev. Now, Pulev pulled out with a shoulder injury. Uh, loads of people who had bought tickets were disappointed that they weren't going to see the fight they were originally scheduled. However, in my opinion, in someone like Carlos Takam, you have someone who's going to put on a more entertaining show than maybe the Pulev fight. Carlos Takam has is well known for coming forward. He's a zombie. You hit him on the chin, he's not going to take a step back. He's going to keep coming at you. Well, that's probably something Anthony Joshua wants, but it'll make for an entertaining fight either way. Another thing about Takam is he has an absolute granite chin. Now, with someone like Anthony Joshua, with 19 knockouts, is this going to prove too much of a difficulty? I highly doubt it, but I'd like to see this one go into deep waters. I'd like to see Takam try and drag Joshua into deep waters, but I can't really see that happening. But I I don't think it's going to be over within one to two rounds. I think we're going to see three rounds at least. So let's talk a bit, uh, talk a bit about Carlos Takam. His record stands at 35, 3, and 1. Of, a, of those 35 wins, there's 27 knockouts. Some of the names he's come up against, he lost to Joseph Parker. No no real shame in that. He's beat people like Michael Grant. Mike Perez was his draw. And he's been an active fighter for a long time. He's been in the professional boxing since 2005. So he's a seasoned veteran. Don't expect him to come into this fight and think, I'm here for the money. I'm here to get knocked out. I'll have my 15 minutes of fame, and then I'll ride off into the sunset. That's not going to happen. Carlos Takam is going to try and shock the world. And if he does, by some, if he somehow pulls this off, it's going to be one of the biggest upsets in boxing because Anthony Joshua currently stands at 1-66 to to win this fight. That means if you put 66 pound on Anthony Joshua to win, you're going to win a pound profit. That's my one negative about this card, is that I feel that fights are too one-sided. I mean, Anthony Joshua, you've got Katie Taylor's fight against Sanchez. She's also 1-66. to You've got Frank Buglioni versus Craig Richards. Dylan White versus Robert Hellenius. The only really close fight, in my opinion, on the card is David Allen versus Lenroy Thomas. My opinion on Anthony Joshua might be controversial. I I think obviously he has the potential to be one of the gr- one of the greats. However, he's only had nineteen fights. Yes, I know he's won them all in spectacular fashion, but have a look through his resume, and there's not too many names that scream out at you. And think, he's only been in the professional game since 2013. So let's not start jumping to conclusions and saying he's one of the greatest of all time. You know, I, I, we've seen, we, he's not invincible. We've seen weaknesses weaknesses in his game. We saw Dylan White drag him into, into unknown territories. We saw Vladimir Klitschko take him into deep, deep water and knock him down. I think... What I'd like to see with Anthony Joshua is for him to take on another massive name. I'd love to see Anthony Joshua take on Deontay Wilder. Because if he can get past Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, the scariest man in the division, then I won't be able to say anything. Because he would have taken on the best, taken on the the biggest names and shut them up. And really dominate the division like 
people like the Klitschko brothers did for years. So after this fight, I hope Andy Joshua goes for a huge spectacle fight against someone like Deontay Wilder or maybe Luis Ortiz or another big name. I understand that this fight was a mandatory fight, so you know it's, it's not a case of protecting him or anything like that. I think Andy Joshua is a great fighter, but I don't think he's. I don't think you can say he's an elite fighter just yet because an elite fighter is somebody like Vladimir Klitschko, someone who takes on the best of the someone like Andre Ward, someone who takes on the best of the best, who will fight anywhere and at any time because they're that confident in their game. I understand that Andy Joshua, much like up and coming. British boxers were protected by his promoter Eddie Hearn in his in his earlier fights to really pad out that record. Much like we're seeing with fighters like Josh Boazzi at the moment, just padding out that record so they can start drawing in the fans, the crowds and the bigger fights. And I've got nothing against that. But now now Anthony Joshua has become the face of boxing, at least in the UK the biggest name in the sport, transcending the sport, drawing in audiences that aren't even t- boxing fans. Now he's doing that. I'd love to see him use this opportunity to take on more massive fights like again, like the Vladimir Klitschko fight. I would really want to see Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. That would be... I would be so excited for that fight. So I'm, I really hope we get to see something like that next for Joshua. As for this fight, I think obviously Anthony Joshua is going to win by by uh, TKO or KO. Maybe in the fourth or fifth round, I don't think it's going to end super early. And I don't think he's going to be dragged into deep waters. So I'm going to go for Anthony Joshua, TKO, within rounds three to five. Elsewhere on the card, make sure you check you watch the Dylan White fight. That's gonna That'll be an entertaining fight. Dylan White is one of the best characters in the sport. And I'm sure if you haven't already, you give him a chance, you start following him. You're going to be a massive fan of the body snatcher. Hilarious, entertaining, talented. Obviously on the un- on the undercard, check out the fights of Josh Boazzi, Joe Codina and Lawrence O'Coley. If you want to get on board early, because I feel Josh Boazzi has the potential to be what Anthony Joshua is today. And if you're typically new to the world of boxing and you're drawn in just by names like Anthony Joshua, stick around because there's so many great fights this year. Uh, Deontay Wilder's fighting next month. We've got, the, in my opinion, the best boxing match there's going to be in a long time. Vassal Lomachenko versus Rigondeaux. We've also got Tony, uh, Tony Bellew, David Hay rematch. Um, in December, so we've got George Groves, Chris Chris Eubank Jr. It's 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 an incredible time to be a fight fan. So if you come to support Andy Joshua and, and you and you know you're not a hardcore boxing fan, please stick around because you won't be disappointed. So yeah, either way, even if you don't think this fight's gonna be a a barnstormer or or the greatest technical fight or or co- even a competitive fight. Either way, it's going to be a massive spectacle. It's in the Principality Stadium, Cardiff. The Welsh fans are going to be passionate, loud, and extremely excited. They've sold out. It's going to be an absolute spectacle once again. Always is when Anthony Joshua fights. And it'll be great to watch. And who knows? It could be one of the... It could be a massive upset on the cards. Tackham could shock the world. So you never know in a sport like boxing. One punch and it's all over. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the fight. I asked on Instagram and Twitter your predictions. I decided to record this straight away so I haven't got time to read any ones out that haven't come in yet. But I'm going to read out one by J underscore 9.30. That's from Instagram. That's J underscore 9.30. And he's predicting Anthony Joshua to win in the third round via knockout to the head. It's a good prediction. And if it comes through, if it comes through, who knows? I might have a little something to give away. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the fight. 
And that's going to do it for this one. Let me know in the comments how you think the fights are going to go down. Contact them, shock the world. Will there be another dominant display by Joshua? And more importantly, what do you want next for Anthony Joshua after this one's done? Alright, that's going to do it for this one.